Hello, everyone. I'm Kat Timpf, along with Eric Bowling and Ebony K. Williams. We are the Fox News Specialists. <music> President Trump is wasting little time reigniting his war with leakers and the mainstream media. The latest allegations are now focusing on his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, claiming Kushner proposed opening a communications back channel to the Russian government during the transition. President Trump is swinging back, tweeting, quote, It is my opinion that many of the leaks coming out of the White House are fabricated lies made up by the, quote, fake news media. And officials like Homeland Security Secretary John Kelly are even defending the alleged plan. I think uh, any... Uh, channel of communication back or otherwise with a country like Russia is a, is a good thing. I mean, multiple ways to communicate back and forth uh, is, is a good thing with any country, I think, and particularly a country that's uh, like Russia. Um, so um, it, doesn't, it doesn't bother me. More leaks? We got more leaks. I know the, the back channel issue, of course, was the way in which he set it up. Well, they're, they're saying he set it up again, just anonymous leaks. You know what it feels like? It feels like this is the deep state, the, the leakers, uh, getting together with the swamp, the D.C. establishment that's fearful of losing their, their status and their position in D.C., and aided and abetted by the mainstream media, very liberal left-leaning mainstream media, to create the illusion that this Russia story has legs and there's some there there, but really there isn't. They're, they continue to, to fuel this thing that happens to not be able to ignite. Meanwhile, Trump has done everything he promised to do with creating jobs. Stock markets are on a tear. Uh, the economy is, is, is hitting on all cylinders, and he, and he has a phenomenal foreign policy trip over the last nine days, yet they're going to go and say, Jared Kushner created back channels. I got to tell you something. Creating back channels to Russia is one of the most common things that have been done, that has been done by administrations from Obama to Clinton to Bush to Bush to Reagan. Right. I don't think it was the back channels themselves. that It was the accusation that he wanted to use only Russian communications equipment to do so. But again, Ebony, mm -hmm. still anonymous. Media is acting as if it's not in many cases. Yeah, and I think this is where American fatigue hat starts to kick in. I think those of us who are legitimately interested in, in any possible wrongdoing, this sounds like pure noise. Uh, this sounds like a distraction. It's not helpful at all. If it's not coming from the FBI or the DOJ, I'm really not interested. I feel the same way. <laughs> all right, let's meet today's specialists. She is a former editorial writer for The Washington Times. She's a former reporter for Politico, and she's currently a political analyst and founder of Bold, a digital news platform. So naturally, she specializes in everything politics. Carrie Sheffield is here. Hey, guys. Great to be here. <laughs> and he is a political commentator. He's a candidate for Brooklyn, New York Borough President, and he's the co-host of the last podcast on the left. But he specializes in everything crime he even has a crime podcast ben kissel is here thanks for having me guys oh, thanks awesome. ben. Thank ben great you, to you see you yes. yes and happy memorial day yes, yes. yes. of course, of course. Good yes. Job happy flag. proud american well, hashtag proud american let's make a trend <laughs> yeah I just, i'm very it's proud fun. even though i'm wearing teal and don't have a flag i'll just say that <laughs> don't hold that against me no. so carrie we talked about these leaks i know you've been somebody who's been critical of trump what do you think about this story do you think eric has got nothing do you think maybe something or you're still waiting how do you feel about well, it yeah so there were a lot of things that trump said in the campaign that really upset me but i feel like all of this criticism against the president has jumped the shark i mean we're talking about anonymous sources basically sources say as president trump says you can basically make up whatever you want sources say that garth brooks is my boyfriend oh. sources say that Ooh. i jumped on lebron james sources say whatever you want them to say these are anonymous made-up things look i believe in the first amendment everyone here at this table we believe in the first amendment but to be american we also have the fifth Amendment. You can't pick and choose which part of the Constitution. What's in the Fifth Amendment? The right to due process. The right to the fact that you are innocent until proven guilty. And the media, the liberal establishment, has jumped the shark and they're throwing Trump under the bus with no evidence. I love that. <laughs> are, you, are you sure you didn't go to law school, Carrie? I mean, my goodness, that was brilliant. Ben, what do you think? Uh, you know, it's very interesting. Obviously, I think attacking the leakers, we're sort of attacking uh, the messenger and not the message. Yes, we don't have concrete evidence of Russian collusion. We do know that Kushner met with, uh, uh, with uh, Kilziak. 
Kislyak. Uh, Kislyak. Kislyak. Uh, so we do know there, are, there was definitely some uh, interaction, and of course, with that bank meeting with Gorkov. Um, right now, there is a lot of smoke. We don't have the fire, but as we know, uh, what kills most people in a fire is the smoke, and it mm. definitely is suffocating the Trump administration right now. And as Eric pointed out uh, in his words, uh, it is. Uh, it is uh, greatly undermining all of these successes uh, in the minds of Donald Trump. I'm going to read something to you, and, and this, is, this is why I think this is just absolute hypocrisy by the fake left-leaning uh, mainstream media. You point, you point out Kislyak, and we're talking about these back channels. December 31st, 2014, Bloomberg Magazine. It, the, the title of this story is Inside Obama's Secret Outreach to Russia. They go into what was going on behind the scenes, but... John Kerry has been the point man, this is, I'm quoting the article, point man on dealing with Russia because his close relationship with Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, they meet often, often without any staff members present and talk on the phone regularly. This is a back channel. The left media didn't go crazy over this when it was John Kerry and, and President Obama's uh, State Department, but they're going absolutely crazy when it's Donald Trump and Jared Kushner. Give me a break. And by the way, Jared Kushner did this before Donald Trump was even president, they're, they're, the accusations. But I think the White House is doing a good job, Eric, of actually responding to it. Now, let's talk about anonymous sources here. Uh, most of the time, they don't have credit. If you're going to put your reporting based on anonymous sources, then it's all on the reporter's credibility. So when we got uh, an update here uh, at the inside team here from Catherine Herridge, that means something to me, the fact that she's saying it. And basically, her reporting was a very detailed, a very clear explanation as to who Jared Kushner allegedly talked mm -hmm. to, the point of it, the why the secure line was, was requested and by Russia, not from Jared Kushner himself. And so all of that makes some sense to me if it indeed comes out to be that way. The most important part, Jared Kushner's uh, anxiousness to get in front of Congress and tell his side of the story. That transparency, I think, will certainly go a long way. Right. Sure. I see so many of these stories that don't even mention that, saying, mm -hmm. or uh, they do it to the very bottom. He's saying, I'll talk to Congress. But any of these meetings, he's yep. continually said that. No, mm -hmm. well, absolutely. And the comparison, I think, here is uh, in the Obama White House, you had Valerie Jarrett, a very close personal friend from Chicago, who basically was, you know, Barack Obama's, you know, tell-all. Very close. And, and where was the leftist media there? Nowhere. When you look at, I mean, on this program last week, we talked, you guys talked about the Harvard study. I went to the Harvard Kennedy School that produced that study. When Harvard, when Harvard, of all places, and I can tell you, there's such bias against conservatives at Harvard. When freaking Harvard says that there is leftist bias in the media, that, like, that means something. I think that there are two main differences, though, of these allegations, as I mentioned allegedly wanting to use solely Russians communications gear and the fact that he would have done it without normally you work with the existing administration and the yes but, 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 but no, but, no the difference is, the difference is that Barack Obama did not he, he took the Trump win incredibly personally and the fact that the entire regime was turned against him that's the difference let, here let me add something Bendo, right now hold on, on, this is very important Kat, they're very important because you said this is you know there's this is different uh, less than an hour ago, General Hayden, who was the former director of the NSA under Barack Obama, was on CNN, and he was asked, did Jared Kushner, based on what you know, all these alle allegations, did he do anything illegal? And General Hayden said unequivocally, looked right in the camera, said, no, he didn't do anything illegal. Well, I wouldn't have advised to him to have done that, but he didn't do anything right, illegal. Yeah, I didn't say illegal. And, but, but that's I would just the explain the here. difference. We, are, we have a left-leaning media and people who are jumping on that bandwagon saying, hey, look at all this stuff. There, there's, right. Ben mentioned a lot of smoke. Right. Well, sometimes there is a lot of smoke and no fire at all. But again, that, it was, it, it, that smoke is, is uh, filling up the room and it's blinding uh, people from being able to see what Donald Trump is doing uh, right in his mind. Uh, I mean, also, we have to keep in mind what's happening now with James Comey, per, uh, going to be uh, testifying for this, uh, in front of the Senate very soon. If it does come out to be true that Donald Trump tried to impede the investigation into Michael Flynn, then the Russian scandal is moot because now we have to do it. the hypothetical, though, Ben. You're doing exactly what the left-leaning media is doing. You know what Comey said? Sure, I'll testify. But you know what else he said? I'm not bringing that, that smoking gun note that he allegedly wrote right after the meeting that allegedly Donald Trump leaned on him to look the other way on an investigation. Well, and Eric, 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 not, Eric, he's not going to put that into the record. We're just going to have to wait and see what he said, uh, to see what Comey says under oath. And I think we will get a lot of information. I completely agree. All right. And despite all of the fur around Russia investigation, a few aren't forgetting to ask how this impacts the average American. Mm. No one in Ohio is asking about Russia. I mean, we have to deal with this. We definitely have to deal with this. It's on the minds of the American people. But if you want to know what people in Ohio, they want to know about jobs. They want to know about their children. We are preoccupied with this. It's not that this is not important, yep. but everyday Americans are being left behind because it's Russia, Russia, Russia.
What do, you, do you think that there's any truth to that? I think that that is absolutely dead on. Mm -hmm. People do not care about this stuff, and the Democratic Party does have to be careful to not overreach and do a proverbial witch hunt. They need to start focusing on jobs. They need to get their populism message back. And if they don't do that, we're going to see a, a similar result in 2020. And did y'all see the letter beside that uh, elected official's name? She was a Democrat. This is yes. an Ohio state legislature. She's a woman of the Democratic Party. And she's saying for her constituents, not that Russia's not important in the big scheme of things, but they care about jobs, what's going on with everyday Americans. Ebony, and, and that's exactly. kind of Ebony the Americans care about jobs and the economy. There's a small 100%. group, the mainstream media, who thinks they care about Russia, but it's been proven time and time again. They don't really care about that. They care about how, can putting they take food the on their table. Out? Right. No, it's a, well, exactly. and, and to your point on smoke, so it's illegal to yell fire in a crowded room. It's illegal because it's dangerous. And if you have fire, then absolutely yell fire. But there's no fire here. It hasn't been proven. Again, I go back to the Fifth Amendment. Innocent until proven guilty. Due process. Where is your fifth? Like, where is the ACLU on that? Come on, ACLU. Join. Defend the Fifth Amendment for President Trump. Where is it? So that's well, when the political aspect takes over, right? And, and yes, I say this you know, as an indictment of them. And I've been very critical of a lot of this media stuff. Because if and when there is real wrongdoing, to your point, Ben, mm -hmm. how many people are even going to believe it? Because they've cried wolf on this issue for so long that no one even believes half the things that come out of any mainstream media outlet at this point. Well, let's say that nothing does come out of it. Regardless of all of that, it is remarkable to watch somebody like Donald Trump, who ran on a platform of being an, a magnificent brander, not be able to get in front of these stories and actually uh, create a media narrative that paints him in a more positive light. And now, as we see with the leakers, his inner circle is just going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And I don't really see how he's going to uh, get ahead of any of this. I'll tell you one thing that you saw a big change in that, that uh, setup, Cat, uh, in the open. You said you read Donald Trump's tweet for the first time. I think this is the first time I've ever seen him tweet, start a tweet with, it's my opinion. Yeah. And then he followed up with, with the, that the leaks are, are uh, fabricated in the, uh, by the mainstream media. See what Usually happens when you get a lawyer? More yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that was amazing. God, worth Brilliant. like $900 an hour. I'm sure that person's charged. Well, the media's not doing themselves any favors either, coming out of MSNBC and saying, oh, well, the, you know, maybe he's going to send the nuclear codes. Maybe Kushner want to give the nuclear codes. Come on. Come on. To actually say that in a serious way and mean it seriously, I can't imagine what your in your brain would make you think that obviously it could be plenty of other things other than that it's, 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 it's about it's the fact scary. it's the, yeah. about the fact again the harvard study showed 93 92 percent of abc sienna all the mainstream media is anti-trump whereas fox news roughly 50 50. i mean that's what we need truth and the liberal media ain't giving it to us all right absolutely all right well the white house is preparing a war room and potential staff shakeup to battle the wave of attacks against it but is it the right strategy to regain the upper hand we'll be right back President Trump reportedly planning a major shakeup in strategy, taking aim at aggressively combating attacks against his administration. The White House is looking to create a, quote, war room to rapidly respond to any new allegations around the Russia investigation. It may also include a staffing overhaul in the White House Communications Office. Additionally, there may be more rallies around the country so President Trump can speak directly to his supporters. Uh, Ebony, after a week away on a foreign policy trip, he comes back to this. This could be a way that Trump resets the, you know, the, the narrative and the debate here in America. Yeah, and I think that's important. Look, if I'm advising President Trump, Eric, you know, we've talked about it, communications and messaging has been, to me, surprisingly challenging for this administration. Uh, it's been less about what's been going so, so wrong and more about the narratives coming out of this. Ben, you talked mm -hmm. about this. I think... The rallies are great for President Trump. I think get out there, get back in front of your base, uh, primarily rejuvenate, feel better about it. I think the international trip went very well for the president. I think capitalize on that. And you know what? Say so we're going to reset this. And guess what? 2018 is not so far away. So I think it's time to putting those political points on the board and re-addressing uh, that in front of Israel. Say, so you know what we've done? We've improved the economy. I've put a uh, conservative on the Supreme Court. Get those accomplishments out there. And Kat, what about this idea of maybe scaling back the, the daily press briefing to a weekly press briefing? A little less transparency, but 
I, all the shots he's taking from the mainstream media, maybe not a bad idea. I prefer the transparency, but I would like to see Trump playing a larger role. I think rallies really are a good thing for him. The communication strategy has created a lot of additional problems for Trump. The best example of this being after Comey was fired yes. and then the press team was saying one thing and then Trump said another thing. They have to get that under the control. And if that means talking less right now, I would probably be advising him to do that. I would be advising to make sure that they have a unified message that they absolutely know because that creates, I mean, that's the reason some people are suspicious is the reply to the accusations rather than the accusations themselves. So they really need to be more careful. Terry, I love the idea of getting out there. He had a, a Des Moines, Iowa uh, rally that's scheduled that got pushed back a little bit. But I agree. I think this is a great opportunity to go see the people in the heartland and speak directly to them, not what they're hearing from the mainstream media. Yes, to go connect to the people who brought him there, the people who actually care about making America great again. That's the whole purpose about this. And I got to say, you know, it's, it's easy to get caught up in the, the East Coast bubble media. That's what's been happening here. And, and we got to get back to the kitchen table, uh, you know, effects here. Like you said, Ebony, the fact that the president nominated a, and put on a conservative on the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. the fact that he has approved drilling, the fact that he is, you know, turning the economy on from a regulatory position, the fact that he's going to dismantle Dodd-Frank, which is a destructive force on our uh, economic driving um, and so many other things that he should and can be talking about but he's not because he's getting distracted right. by the liberal media. And, and Ben what happens in these press briefings is yeah he has all these accomplishments that that, that uh, Kerry just outlined and many more and they'll put that out there at the beginning of the briefing and then all these reporters hands go up and all they want to talk about is a Russian investigation. His number one accomplishment is the fact that Neil Gorsuch yep. is talented uh, <laughs> which isn't really a, uh, a, a a huge victory for Donald Trump himself. I, I think that Neil Gorsuch was a good. A choice. lot of people voted for him. A lot of people voted for him because he was going to nominate uh, a conservative to the court as, versus Hillary. And he certainly uh, lived up to that promise. It's a new world now, though. We have the House passing Trump Care, uh, Medicaid, Medicare cuts. I think when he goes out there into the heartland, he's going to see what a lot of these Republicans are seeing when they go back to their districts. It might not be the friendly crowds that he remember uh, that he remembers. And because now his policies are coming to fruition, and a lot of middle Americans. Americans aren't feeling as if he is uh, supporting a lot of the middle Americans now are, are feeling better about the economy. Some so the, all the markets are taking off the stock market, the labor market, the housing market. They're all at some at 16 year highs right now. The stock markets at all time highs. I think middle America. It, but you're from Wisconsin. I am from Wisconsin. What do you think yeah. Wisconsin feels about Donald Trump's I economic think, success? I think uh, the economic uh, success, as you mentioned, okay, that's uh, that's obviously a, a good thing. But going back uh, to health care, pre-existing conditions, things like that, that really matters to people. And the fact that uh, they kept the, uh, basically it's a 30% tax on young people if they don't uh, get health care. That's exactly what Barack Obama did for the most part. So there is a lot of anger when it comes to Trump's policy, the biggest one being Trump care. But I respectfully house. disagree. I mean, he's doing, I, I had a lot of skepticism of Trump. I didn't know if he could govern, but the people he surrounded himself with, it's not just Neil Gorsuch. It's about, you know, Ajit Pai over at the F Federal Communications Commission. He's repealing net neutrality, which is a job killer. He is sending a budget that is going to put our generation as millennials on the path to success. Because right now, we are drowning in debt, and I am so glad that Donald Trump won. Kara, yeah. even if you... <laughs> that, that all sounds good and dandy. Here's the problem, though. Messaging. Here's my right. point, Eric. Right. If, if we're going to blame Hillary Clinton for never regaining a narrative and letting the mm -hmm. emails dog and, and totally take out her messaging and her campaign, I think we've got to hold our president to the same state. Got to get control of that message. I do agree with you, Ebony, and yeah. I think that we can take a page here from Ronald Reagan. So 1986, mm -hmm. after the Iran-Contra scandal, Ronald Reagan, his, his approval rating was tanking. And what did he do? He cleaned house, exactly what President Trump said he's going to do. He got a brand new chief of staff. He wiped out the old guard. He got a new guard. They turned the ship around, and he was tremendously successful he with two-thirds popularity. Got, got a new guard. Trump isn't replacing these people with anyone. All right. Yeah. That, but by the way, yeah, by the way what that's really, what really matters about. is the economy, jobs, and, and, and you know people's pocketbooks, wages, and he's killing it on there. Why would he change anything right now? If you're winning, get out of your own way. <laughs> I'll leave right there. North Korea ratcheting up tensions after successfully testing a new missile, and a third U.S. carrier strike group is now on the way to the region. What will it take to rein in that rogue state? We're coming right back. North Korea defying the world yet again, conducting a successful test of what experts believe is a new type of short-range missile.
President Trump condemning the provocation, tweeting today, quote, North Korea has shown great disrespect for their neighbor China by shooting off yet another ballistic missile, but China is trying hard. Defense Secretary James Mattis also delivering a blunt assessment of the crisis. We are working with the international community to deal with this issue. This uh, regime is a threat to the region, to Japan, to South Korea. And in the event of war, they would bring danger to China and to Russia as well. But the bottom line is it would be a catastrophic war if this turns into uh, combat, if we're not able to resolve this situation through diplomatic means. The U.S. escalating its own show of force against the rogue state, with a third carrier strike group now being sent to the region. Eric Bowling, this is getting wow. worse, not better. The yep. sanctions aren't working. What more can we do? Well, our sanctions aren't working, but China's sanctions would work if they would step up. And I think they were concerned about this last missile test. This one landed 215 miles off the shore of Japan in the Japan Sea. That's very concerning, considering Seoul, South Korea is only 35 miles away from very the border. Up. And we have 30, yes. 25 or 30,000 U.S. Um, service members along that border or in the area. I'll tell you one thing that's going to happen tomorrow, and this news came out today. We're going to launch this intercontinental ballistic missile from the Marshall yeah. Islands tomorrow, and we're going to test fire an anti-missile strike from, I believe it's, uh, shoot it down using the interceptor, launched from an Air Force Base in California. Yes, that was so, the best report But here's that I heard. the problem. Yeah. This thing has a 9 out of 17 hit strike so far. So if we go ahead and test that and it doesn't work out, you're going to embolden uh, North Korea, uh, Kim, Kim Jong-un. I'm concerned about it. But if it does work, I think it's a clear message. Oh, look, here's the bottom line. Trump's right. We need China to get on and get on board fast and hard. Yeah, Ben, how about that? I mean, in this tweet, very deliberate, obviously, coming from President mm -hmm. Trump, saying, you know what, it's disrespectful to you, China. You know, you guys are trying. But is Eric right? China needs to try harder. And, of course, that's why Donald Trump no longer calls him a currency manipulator, mm -hmm. uh, something that he uh, said on a regular basis on the campaign trail. North Korea, uh, Kim Jong-un, this reminds me of a cult in their waning days. Uh, they really are becoming uh, bombastic. They're, they're much more... Um, uh, you know, the, the destruction uh, is definitely in the minds of Kim Jong-un. And that's why what happens in North Korea, that's why it's so destabilizing what Donald Trump did uh, regarding NATO. We need our allies more than ever before. And I do understand that we pay over 3% of our GDP and the majority of countries pay under 2%, which, is the, which was sort of the norm that was set. But uh, right now, we need our allies to know where we are coming from because North Korea is extremely uh, bombastic and exceptionally dangerous. But Kara, we can't do it all by ourselves. And that's what we're talking about to Ben's point. We do need that. Here's the issue. As Eric said, Japan, they're getting close there. They've come out, they've protested. Everyone's asking for calmness and peace. But call me crazy. How do you have diplomacy with somebody like Kim Jong-un? How do you have diplomacy uh, with this type of enemy? Well, uh, so the new president who just took office in South Korea, he is very uh, liberal. Um, and you know, Moon Jae-in is his name. And he wants to have greater, he wants unification with the North and South. That could be the entry point here, I think, for President Trump. But let's be honest, though, this is cleaning up the mess of Barack Obama. So what was supposed to happen in the eight years of Barack Obama was this, quote, unquote, pivot to Asia. That never happened. Again, if you voted for Hillary Clinton, you were voting for the continuation of eight years of failure. So this but is she what, didn't well, let me be fair. She didn't win. Fair. I don't think. Win. No, so I'm, who, no who, but, but, but I'm, I'm saying this pivot to Asia never happened. So we were supposed to be shifting our strategic asset, assets to Asia. And and pushing more pressure on China, and that didn't happen. So I, I absolutely don't... agree we have to put more pressure on China. Because Ch China is the patron saint of the North Koreans. The North Korean economy is dead. It is mm -hmm. communist. The only reason they survive is the lifeline from China. So it's absolutely China. Look, look, the way Kim Jong-un would be a complete lunatic, whether or not Obama was someone who ever existed. I don't think it's really fair to completely sure. pin this yeah. all on She's Barack Obama. And I, I, I don't strategic think... patience, which was the U.S. policy, was not just in a Barack Obama administration policy. Right. That was it predated, uh, multiple. It predated, uh, multiple but I, I will tell you, patients. you know what three uh, carrier strike groups are called? 300,000 tons of diplomacy headed right to that region. Well, I, you know, I, I, I understand well, why, why uh, Matt said what he said about being one of the bloodiest, uh, horrible uh, conflicts in our history if it happens. But I got to tell you, three carrier strike groups surrounding North Korea. They're done. And the yeah, but I, I, think, I, think, I think the tunnels also. There's all the you know underground bases. It would it would be a huge problem. And even we talk about yes. today being Memorial Day. We need. I want to talk you about know who keep, the best want this? way to honor our troops you, is to try to keep them home. You know who wants this the least of all? China.
Yeah, you would have a horses. massive refugee crisis in China. Absolutely. They'd go right north to the border and try and yeah. uh, flood the Chinese. They're in China uh, region. Uh, I, I don't know. I, at the same time, China has been aggressive, not just uh, in the Philippines, in Vietnam. The entire They're building fake islands throughout the South China Sea. So this goes beyond North Korea. Because let's be honest, if the Chinese wanted to put their thumb and say North Korea, stop it, they would, but they're not. This is the real problem. And so this is where I actually do blame Barack Obama, because Barack Obama did not have a, a robust strength, uh, a strong position against China. And so it's absolutely absolutely true that the fact of the matter is Donald Trump won because he was projecting strength and he said sure. we're not going to sit down or we're not going to take it anymore because China is aggressing throughout mm. the entire South China Sea. Under Barack Obama, the North Koreans did not send a missile uh, to the Japanese Sea, to the Sea of Japan. So th I, I think that's kind of uh, a strange point to make. They no, are emboldened no. uh, because, again, uh, Donald Trump's U.S. foreign policy, Americans, we don't know where we are right now in the world. We're, we're angering the Germans. We're, we're befriending uh, the, the uh, president of the Philippines. I mean, what is going on right now with Obama's foreign policy? And that's what's emboldening Trump, Kim right. Jong, uh, yes, I'm sorry, Trump's foreign policy. And that's what's emboldening Kim Jong-un to act so erratically. I think, and again, I, I think he's, he's, got, an opportunity. he's got a suicide he's mission. I mean, yeah, that's what I'm saying, they're fatalistic. Really, really, well, of course, but and, and part of the reason is because he wasn't always as emboldened. In, first of all, he wasn't in power at the beginning, and then he wasn't as, as crazy. He's getting progressively crazier. Crazy, yes. you, you remember, what was that, oh. that, that, oh, God, I can't remember the, the war movie. As time went, the leader got crazier and crazier, and this is what's happening with, uh, with Kim Jong-un. He's yes. literally on a death wish. And that's why the U.S., we need our allies more than ever. Because uh, We don't need, Ben. What do we need our allies for? We have we need them for their we military have Japan, bases. We have South Korea. We have three carrier strike groups in the area. In order we to continue level that the foothold that we have on the globe, we need to have our allies. We need to have our military installations there. It's massively important. But, but we do need to have allies. allies. I don't, I don't, I don't think allies. that anybody, yeah, I, don't, I, I think that although it may be strained with some of our allies under Trump, you can't go on forever and ever not letting people pay their fair share. And I, 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 don't disagree I think with that, that Trump also made it clear that we are going to be there for our allies in NATO and that we will continue to be there for them. I can't imagine any scenario when we, we would not be there for them. And if something like North Korea actually reared to a head, that would be a mm -hmm. whole complete different story. I if agree. we were found that self in our situ that situation, I don't think he'd be talking. And I don't think that talking. President Trump is saying we're going to abandon our allies. And I also don't think it's wrong to expect them to pay for their fair right. share. But up next, it's time to wake up America. Eric Bowling is ready to sound off about patriotism and honoring Memorial Day. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Fox News Specialists. Our specialists today are Kerry Sheffield and Ben Kissel. But now it's time to wake up America. You know, I cringe when I hear Happy Memorial Day while Americans celebrate the long weekend, firing up the barbecues, serving the burgers, hot dogs, a lemonade or a beer. But it's clear to me that culturally, we've lost sight of what today really should mean. It's a day of remembrance. But the growing military civilian disconnect means our servicemen and women come home to disrespect and almost no support by our society. Think about that for a second. Do we respect these heroes? We should hold our service members at a higher level than our celebrities, our musicians, and our athletes. Katy Perry never looked down the barrel of an M16 at the enemy. Sean Penn never entered an abandoned building teeming with enemy fighters. Kanye West never did advance reconnaissance for a platoon, yet they make billions doing what they do because of our military. The saying, freedom isn't free, means so much, but do we understand the magnitude of that statement? Just for a moment now. Think to yourself, put yourself in one of those soldiers' bodies. Imagine the guttural fear and anxiety as you're prepared to ambush a terror cell in an abandoned building in some faraway country, a place where the people there likely hate you almost as much as the terrorists inside the building. Meanwhile, thousands of miles away, your family waits for you at home, constantly worrying, will you come back or not? You walk into that dark building, why? Because that's what you do, you're an American soldier. You fight for the flag. So you get it? These men and women deserve our unequivocal respect. So the next time some liberal fool burns a flag or disrespects a service member, remind them that over a million men and women have given their lives for them, including the right to be anti-American and despicable. And finally, after eight years of the apologist in chief, we bid farewell to Obama's America. And now with Donald Trump, we have a new breed of commander in chief. There's no bowing to sheiks nor pardoning traitors in Trump's America. Just respect for the military. Make America great again. The left hates the slogan. We patriotic Americans take pride in it. And I will start with Carrie, who has her flag. <laughs> That's right. I am a proud American. Yes, I salute. I think it's important also to note that this is Memorial Day, which is different from Veterans Day. 
Memorial Day is for people who have given the last full measure of their devotion. Veterans Day is for people, all, you know, all armed services, living or perished. You know, but Memorial Day is really for people who sacrificed while in service. And I don't think that that is emphasized enough, exactly what you said. And also, when you look at the elite cultural institutions, as you mentioned, I think Colin Kaepernick is the perfect embodiment of someone who's totally out of touch of sacrifice uh, and, and really what, what it means to be an American. You know, we're not a perfect country. We're not a perfect country. I mean, we, we struggle with so many issues civil rights, slavery. I mean, we're not a perfect country, but the, the founding documents are about a more perfect union and heading in that direction. And so to deny that by, you know, not supporting our troops, it's, it's just really sad. Who didn't support our troops, Carrie? Um, well, for example, at Harvard, I went to Harvard. Mm -hmm. uh, for a long time, you could not recruit from the armed services. This happened in Vietnam. It wasn't just Harvard, it was all the Ivy Leagues. And you look at, you look at the studies, when student freshmen come in and they come out, they're more liberal than when they, they started. And I am convinced in part, it's because they're not sitting next to their classroom classmates. There are no military servicemen and women uh, sitting next uh, to them. Let me, let me follow that up, Ebony. Um, so we all know, and we'll get, to, we'll get to the libertarians in a second here. <laughs> we know you have a right to burn a flag, but they're, they're constantly goes on and there's every year there's you know four or five incidences where these kids on college campuses decide to burn the flag in, in, in support of ant some some sort of anti-war rhetoric mm -hmm. that's disrespectful to the men and women who died in in honor of that flag okay so I'm gonna take this opinion I asked Carrie that follow-up question because I, I thought you were implying that Colin Kaepernick somehow was disrespecting the men and women who have oh I think country. he was well I, 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 I want to oh, I, I I say too. Yeah. okay guys I want to say this that he heard that criticism and he responded. That's how much it concerned him. So he sat down with people who have served our country, particularly a Marine, to explain to him. And that's when he stopped just sitting on the bench and started taking the knee because he wanted to show that I have a, an incredible amount of, this is what Colin Kaepernick said, this is not my opinion. He said that I have an incredible amount of respect for the men and women who have served our country. I just, as Kerry pointed out, happen to see some imperfections in our beautiful country and I want to have those addressed. That's it, now I'll but, say but, this. But, you, but the you, difference you, is- Are you saying that taking a knee was respectful that's to, what the, to the that's, American? American, that's what the, the Marines to the, told him. To the men and women who died defending that flag? I've when, never when, served. When I've never served, Eric. But all I know is that's what the Marine that Kaepernick sought counsel for on the issue advised him to do. He said that that would be deemed to be more res a more respectful display of his um, protest. How about least disrespectful? Can I well, go with that? Well, I think you still, but you, still <laughs> have, you still have a right to protest. Babies. Though, right? Absolutely. Okay. And let's talk about that. The right to protest, I get it, but should we? In yeah. this instance. Sure. Look, I don't think it's really fair to say that because someone protests in whatever way they're protesting peacefully, that means that they don't care about the people that died for their freedom. I think that's a pretty serious charge to levy against somebody, Carrie. I really, really have to say that. People just going after and throwing. Somebody, people on Twitter attacking me right now because I'm wearing teal, and great. that means that I hate my country and I don't care about the troops, when in reality I didn't have time to do laundry this weekend because I was at West Point Military Academy watching my cousin graduate, so sorry. And seeing well, so, the, so let me yes. say that. Let me say that. You have a cousin that graduated. Yes. From, uh, by the way, thank you for his service yeah. and you and your whole yes. family. Now, what do you think when the flag is burned in front of him? Wouldn't that, wouldn't that tick you off to no end, that boy or girl? Jeremy, my cousin Jeremy, what? he's a man. And wouldn't you know that drive you crazy that, that he put so much effort into, into what he did at West Point that someone could be so disrespectful to burn a flag in front of your cousin? He, it's a huge sacrifice, and I was very inspired by all of these young people who decided to do that, but they decided to do that so people can have their free speech rights. I wouldn't be upset on his behalf. But the person did it. It's always kind of a gross thing to see. I'm not flag burning like, ew, what are you doing? Get well, over Kat, it. But to say that that means that well, they Kat, don't care respond? about the people yeah. that have fought and died, that is a well, little bit I'm harsh. I'm sorry, Kat, but, but Kat, that's not even what I was saying, Kat. Then Actually, if ahead. I can respond to yeah. Kat, uh, what she said. I, what I was talking about, like I said, was elite liberal cultural institutions like Hollywood, like the Ivy Leagues, who fundamentally think of the military as a blue collar Ah, look down your nose at them. These are people who are. No, they oh, absolutely oh, yeah, do. Ben, don't you remember? Okay. No, 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 don't you remember? Okay. Don't you remember okay. when? Okay. But just when? But just when? But just when? First of all, or Hollywood, they're anti-war, and, and a well, lot of times being anti-war does not make you anti-troops. As a exactly. matter of fact, a lot of troops uh, don't enjoy going to wars uh, mm -hmm. for no significant reason, as we saw in 2001. And again, we do have to separate the wars uh, from the people fighting them, uh, and we have to show support to all of our troops fighting, regardless if we agree with the war or not. But you criticize Barack Obama for uh, for his. Uh, interactions overseas. Uh, Donald Trump just curtsied to the Saudi uh, king. He didn't curtsy. Uh, he so leaned over. Whoa, 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 stop. To. Stop and right the, now. Stop. The he leaned over twice for a medal to take honor. Him. He leaned over because the, 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 the Saudi sheik that was giving it to him was too short. I mean, that's not a the military also, fight for Colin Kaepernick. What John Kerry said was, be careful, study, or you might be stuck in Iraq. 
That embodies well, that's the part liberal, but we have French speaking, break. democratic uh, presidential candidates. That's the perfect embodiment of disrespecting our troops. All right, we gotta go right now. Sorry, when we come right back, the debut of our new segment, Do You Even Know? We're quizzing Americans about the Memorial Day holiday right after this. As you know, today is Memorial Day, a very special day where we honor the men and women who've put their lives on the line to keep our great country safe, and especially to those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice to keep our nation great. But how much do people really know about this holiday? We send our producer, Brianna Vota, to the streets of New York City to find out. In the debut of our newest segment, Do You Even Know? Take a listen. Fun plans. Well, um, I, I guess you can tell by looking at me, I'm pretty much of a big fun guy, right? Tell me why you think we celebrate Memorial Day. I believe we celebrate it to honor all the soldiers who died in war. I think Memorial Day is a good time to reflect on uh, U.S. service members who've come before us and serve our country. Memorial Day is in memory of uh, everybody who's passed away, in particular veterans. Where are you from? I'm from Mexico. I've been here for six months. So you should know our entire history and all of our holidays and everything clearly. Why do you think we celebrate Memorial Day? Something happened in the past and Memorial Day happened. I really don't know what it was right now. So. It's a good fudging of the answer. <laughs> it's an important day. Um, to remember all those veterans uh, that they go to the war and they fight. Do you know what Memorial Day was originally called? No, I don't. That's a very good question. Do you? I do, actually. What was Memorial Day originally called? Is it Armistice Day? Armistice Day? Armistice Day? Decorations? Oh my gosh, it was known as Decoration Day. Very good. What were we decorating? The graves of the soldiers. Yes, absolutely. After which war did Memorial Day originate? Uh, prehistoric, uh, colonial, uh, Vietnam, no, no. Boston Tea Party. <laughs> After which war did Memorial Day start? World War One. A little earlier. Civil War. The American Civil War. Civil War? Maybe the, the Civil War? When did Memorial Day become a federal holiday? Sometime before I was born. I'd have to ask a few of my friends. You can find a friend. <laughs> I have one phone call? Normally, but no. Which year did it become a federal holiday? 1854. 1905. Uh, 1969. Very close. All right, 68. Wrong way. 70. Very close. 72. Oh my gosh, no. What year did it become a federal holiday? 1986. 79. 78, 77, 72, 71, Yay! 71, 1971. It was almost your first try. That's very impressive. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> do you watch Fox News and do you watch the Fox News Specialist? And is it your favorite show on television? Of course. Absolutely. Do you watch the Fox News Specialist? Yes. Yes. Good answer. Good answer. And now it's been too much fun. Oh, is man. It thing? Not as far as I'm concerned. That's awesome. <laughs> Don't go away. We'll circle back with our specialists, Carrie Sheffield and Ben Kissel, right after this. Time to circle back with our specialists, Ben Kissel and Carrie Sheffield. Ben, I'm going to go to you. All right. You're running for Brooklyn Borough City President. Yep, you want to talk about for, that for a little bit? Running for Brooklyn Borough President. Uh, <laughs> it's a uh, advocate position. I'm uh, focusing on criminal justice reform, things mm -hmm. like that. And we have our big launch on June 16th at my favorite bar in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, called Skinny Dennis. So if you're in, uh, if you're in town, uh, June free 16th. Peanuts there. Free peanuts. Uh, yeah. Free peanuts. Very cheap beer. It's going to be a wonderful time. My friends' bands are performing. Uh, we have a lot of stickers and buttons, and we're going to have a great time talking about politics and hopefully inspire people to get involved in their local politics. Mm -hmm. And bring a, bring a check. But yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, well, the peanuts are free, so. <laughs> uh, Carrie, let me ask you that you were a Harvard graduate, is that right? You went I am, to, yeah. And, and how in the world did you make it through Harvard and end up conservative? <laughs> 
it's funny, I actually came out more conservative than when I went in, just because I felt like this is so not fair. I felt like the odds, like I've always been someone who fights for the underdog. And just when I would sit in class and the stories, and just I could tell you just the, the discrimination against conservatives, it's so palpable. And so I just came out and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to drink that Harvard Kool-Aid and I, I'm just going to keep the blinders off. Well, glad you made it out alive, Carrie, and you ended up found, founding Bold, which yes. I'm very excited about. It's a very cool concept. Tell us yes, a little bit and, about and it. We profiled uh, you and what you're doing. Very grateful, so, yes. which, you know, you guys do a great job of spotlighting all people, but especially kind of young people that believe in the political system and feel empowered by it. So tell yes, us about yes. It. So our, our website is bold.global. We invite you all to come and uh, we'd love to have you join. And I'd love to have you and come and talk about your book, Eric. We've yes. we've had some right. different Fox people. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you to our Fox News specialists today, Ben Kissel and Carrie Sheffield. And we thank you all for watching in this Memorial Day. Make sure to follow us on social media, Specialist FNC on Twitter and Facebook. Remember, 5 o'clock will never be the same. Special Report is next. On a day dedicated to America's war dead, President Trump pays his respects.